Hi everybody. I know it's been a while since I've actually done a video on my channel again, but here I am and uh, plan to go see Expendables 4 tonight. And uh, I figure, well, since uh, Expendables 4 is coming out, I might as well do a marathon of, uh, of the three that we already have so far. And uh, since I have watched all of them, I'm actually ready to talk about them all here individually and uh, discuss not only the movies, of course, but as well as the uh, Blu-ray releases of all three as well. So, let's go ahead and talk about the first one. Expendables uh, was released back in 2010, and uh, honestly, uh, of course, when I learned about this uh, movie coming out, of course, the little kid in me was going nuts, because obviously I grew up with all these guys from the past, you know, Sylvester Stallone, of course, Jason Statham, Jet Li, Dolph Lundgren, Randy Couture, wherever he is. Steve Austin, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Terry Crews, Mickey Rourke, and Bruce Willis. Although Mickey Rourke isn't really much of an expendable in the movie, but he is a bit of an action star in the past. Terry Crews, I have a little knowledge about him. I've seen him in a couple of movies. Now Steve Austin, I know him obviously for wrestling. Randy Couture, same thing. Jet Li, I've seen him in a couple of movies. And Jason Statham is one of the younger Expendables since he just is one of an up and rising one thanks to like films like the Transporter and the Crank movies. But um, yeah, the story the story of the Expendables is kind of interesting. Um, well, not really much. I mean, this is one of those movies where you really don't really give too much of a damn about the story. You just want to see these guys literally just get involved on the action. You just want to see them wreck shoot and blow up as much stuff as possible so it's one of those movies you just want to turn your brain off and just watch the action and just be <laughs> be excited at what you're about to see this movie was like a f I, I couldn't even imagine how much of a fever pitch dream that it was for sylvester stallone to just come up with a concept like this to bring all these 80s action stars together while well, most of them being 80s action stars bringing them all together for one big movie is just this was like every this was like every you know action fan's dream come to life literally. Basically, the story is Barney Ross, played by Sylvester Stallone, leads a team of basically uh, of uh, soldiers calling themselves the Expendables, just going around the world, just doing all these dirty jobs that only they're literally qualified for because you know they're literally expendable, more or less. So basically, yeah, he runs a tight-knit team of, uh, of skilled combat vets turned mercenaries. Hired by a powerful covert operator, the team joins Jets off to a small South American country to overthrow a ruthless dictator. But once there, they find themselves caught in a deadly web of deceit and betrayal. And using every weapon at their disposal, they set out to save the innocent, punish the guilty. I'm actually reading the back here if you didn't notice already. So that's pretty much the gist of the Expendables. But the cool thing is about... This is that every actor in the film, all the action stars, do get, you know, their little standoff scene. They all do. But the real standoff scene is the scene of a church in which uh, Sylvester Stallone and uh, Bruce Willis are interacting with each other. And then all of a sudden, Arnold Schwarzenegger comes in, and all I can think of is, is this a green screen? Is this real? I mean, like, because that's the first time all three of these guys had appeared in the same screen together. And all I can think of is... Oh, yeah, anybody, man or woman, will literally tell you that, <laughs> more or less, oh my god, but uh, literally, The Expendables, yeah, all I can think of is this movie is just chock full of so much fun, um, now, of course, when the movie came out, it was a monster, it was actually a pretty decent hit at the box office, it opened up really strong, it, uh, had a pretty good box office streak. Of course, the critical reception was mostly mixed. I mean, obviously, for an action movie like this, it's not exactly a film that's going to win, like, Oscars, maybe, or win awards or whatever. But, um, so inside here, uh, here's the, uh, here's the initial movie release of it. I actually own two copies of The Expendables here. The other disc I have here, this is the extended director's cut, and this is just the DVD copy that came with the, uh, movie. Basically, what I did was I took the uh, cover sleeve of the uh, director's cut disc of The Expendables and I just kind of stuck it inside here, which is pretty cool. So now I have two versions of the film. The director's cut version adds about roughly, uh, 
11 minutes of footage to the uh, movie. And uh, Stallone has confirmed he obviously prefers the director's cut release because the extra footage actually helps move the movie flow along a little better with a more emotional touch. Not to mention, they swapped a couple of the uh, songs around for the soundtrack. Now, there was a song that was famously used in the, in the trailer for The Expendables when it first came out, but it was never played for in the theatrical release. But in the director's cut, however, it's back in. And during the final uh, shootout action sequence, they actually used the song from the trailer during the final shootout. And also, they do the same thing for um, the end credits, because for the theatrical release of The Expendables, the end credits song they used was uh, The Boys Are Back in Town by Thin Lizzy. Well, in the director's cut version, they don't use that song. They use the one that was used in the trailer. So... Yeah, it actually, yeah, in some ways, I think the director's cut does flow a little better. So it does kind of make the film work out a little better, though. It's a bit lengthier. It has a bit of a uh, slower, I think the director's cut has a bit of a slower pace than the theatrical version, but it does add more, it does add more uh, to the story and also a bit more emotion, too. Pretty much. So there you go. As for the uh, Blu-rays, honestly, uh, The Expendables actually looks pretty good. Uh, it was released by Lionsgate, of course. Um, now, I really, I guess, I, I really didn't go into much detail since the one, I, the version I saw was the director's cut. Uh, I didn't watch the, I did pop in the theatrical version briefly just to see the, just to check out the bonus features because the, but I'll get into that momentarily. Uh, honestly, The Expendables looks good in high def. It looks really good. Video looks really good. The uh, audio is also a uh, is also top notch, being presented in a. Now, of course, both both uh, movies, theatrical and extended, are both presented in a two two four zero by one wide screen. Yeah, they're both presented in that ratio. As you can see, yeah, it says yeah, it's there too. Uh, both movies also have the. Um, I believe they also have the uh, seven point one DTS audio track, if I'm not mistaken. It's. Here somewhere, but yeah, I'm not sure. It's on the back here somewhere. But I know, I know the audio is presented in uh, DTS 7.1. Both, uh, both theatrical and extended cuts have it. So, uh, the subtitles, I'm sure they're there. But like I said, I'm trying to find them. Uh, oh, here we go. Oh my God, I can't believe I didn't see it the whole time right here. <laughs> Duh. Uh, 7.1 DTS. There's also a French track. Uh, far as I know, in English, Spanish subtitles. So the director's cut disc, I, the, the extended director's cut, I believe, has the... Uh, no, it only has the English uh, 7.1 track. Just that. That's it. But it has the subtitles, though. And honestly, though, the video is really good. I would say 4.5 4 out of 5. The audio, of course, gets a solid 5 out of 5. As for the bonus features... Um, now, obviously, the theatrical version, I think, has the upper hand when it comes to the bonus materials. The director's cut doesn't have as much here, but literally, it's still a pretty decent selection. Yeah, sorry, the image is kind of blurry looking, but uh, try to... So, basically, what we get here for bonuses is uh, Ultimate Recon Mode. It's kind of like a bonus trivia track that plays during the movie. It's like a, yeah, it's like a PIP track, and it's like a video commentary that plays while the movie plays. An actual audio commentary with Stallone as he talks about the movie, and uh, a very informative guy. Uh, he actually talks an awful lot about the experience, the, uh, the history of the film, making it and everything. Inferno, making of the Expendables documentary. It's an hour and a half long, and it's a very comprehensive look at the making of the film. From the Ashes, post-production and release documentary. Again, it's basically uh, the post-production and releasing the film on its uh, yeah. Comic-Con 2010 panel. It's basically a Q&A session with the actors. <laughs> Pretty cool. Deleted scene, uh, gag reel, marketing archive. The deleted material here is not... I don't think it's included in the director's cut release. So uh, I would say for the bonus material for the Expendables theatrical cut, I would say out of five stars, it gets a four and a half for me out of five. Now for the bonus material for the uh, director's cut release, um, there's not as much here. There's an intro to the film, 
Spike TV's action, the Expendables, which I, you know what, I, I'm not exactly sure if that was, well, maybe it wasn't included on there, maybe it's new. Inferno, the making of, it's basically the exact same documentary that was on the, it's on the theatrical cut. Um, Stallone, a director in action featurette, and Sinner's Prayer by Sol Erna music video. So, there's a couple of extras on the director's cut release that are exclusive to the to that release, but the Inferno documentary, I think is ni it's nice that both versions have it, though. So, at least when you buy the director's cut release, but for those of you that, you know, instead of like, well, which version should I own? Or, I mean, well... For me, I just, well, since I own both of them, I really can't complain too much. So, I would say, honestly, I would I would leave it up to the entire, uh, up to the viewer to determine which version of the film they want to own. Theatrical or director's cut. But I will say this, though. The director's cut, the extra footage that's in the movie, actually does help the movie work out better. And in some ways, a lot of, uh, from what I've seen online, there's a... Uh, Quite a few people that actually said the director's cut kind of redeems the film a little bit for whatever flaws that it had. Well, like I said, sometimes the director's cut irons out flaws, and sometimes it kind of it tends to make them a little better, a little worse. But I'm not saying that is a bad thing because sometimes director's cuts do uh, help the movie go a little further. But I will say this though: if you're an action movie buff. Expend the Expendables is definitely one you gotta check out. Highly recommended. Theatrical or director's cut, whichever version you can get your hands on at a good price. I actually strongly suggest that just I'd pick up both and you know try them both out either way. And it's kind of neat to you know have a chance to to experience both versions of the film, literally. Yeah, not only did Sylvester Stallone star in the film, he also wrote and directed, too. Now, Sylvester Stallone has directed a couple of movies. Of course, he's probably known for directing uh, Rockies 2, 3, 4, and also Rocky Balboa. He also directed the Saturday Night Live sequel, Staying Alive. And, of course, he directed the fourth Rambo movie, which is simply called Rambo. So, Stallone, you know, I will say he does have a hand in, you know, directing, so I'll give him that. And uh, his directing credit actually is not bad. Almost every movie he directed has been a big hit. Yes, even Staying Alive was a big hit, believe it or not. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, Expendables, definitely worth watching if you're a huge action fan. All right, so now that I've done with the first one, let's go ahead and talk about the sequel real fast, Expendables 2, which was released in 2012, a couple years after the first movie. And uh, honestly... Uh, I think I was a bit more hyped for this movie than I was for the first one because I feel like what they did in Expendables 2, they kind of multiplied it by 100 with the second movie. So basically in the second film, uh, Barney Ross is uh, again, you know, leading his team of Expendables out into the, out into the wild to essentially uh, do more missions around the globe. But then he gets, uh, he's told by Mr. Church, Bruce Willis, to, you know, do a quick uh, mission for him and... Uh, he also brings in a younger Expendable, played by Liam Hemsworth, Chris Hemsworth's brother. Chris Hemsworth, best known as Thor from the Marvel Universe. And uh, ultimately, uh, they end up crossing paths with a main villain, this time played by another action star from the past, Jean-Claude Van Damme. By the way, first time, as far as I know, first time I've actually seen Van Damme actually play a villain in a movie. And I might add, he actually does it very well. <laughs> so uh yeah unfortunately he ends up taking out one of their own and ultimately the mission that they're on becomes a personal vendetta where they are literally hunting this guy down and finishing him off so that's pretty much the gist of expendables 2 but once again the action scenes just don't let up not to mention the humor is in the film far more often than any of the other than most of the other movies not to mention, uh, some of the humor comes along the lines of, you know, uh, Terry Crews says to Arnold, uh, gives him his, like, big shotgun and tells him, you know, if I don't get this thing back, you're terminated. And I'm like, oh, jeez. <laughs> the fact that Arnold played the Terminator. And at one point he says, I'll be back to Bruce Willis. And Bruce Willis is like, you've been back enough. And then as Bruce takes off, Arnold says, yippee ki -yay. <laughs> obviously a reference to John McClane's famous line from Die Hard. And then, of course, you get freaking Chuck Norris. 
another action star from the 80s that jumps into the fray and just has a bit of fun all his own. And of course, they even have the great and they <laughs> have the <laughs> the greatness to literally use one of those famous Chuck Norris facts in the movie. And the one they use is, uh, "I heard you were bit by a king cobra." And I said, "Yeah." And after five days of agonizing pain, the cobra died. <laughs> I'm like, and of course, yeah. Like I said, again, the actors take center stage, and and the action that occurs near the end of the movie, especially during the uh, airport shootout. Oh man. If you thought Arnold and Bruce didn't get enough scenes to have any have enough scenes in the first movie, oh, they're gonna get it. You'll see them in the second film. Yeah. If you thought if I said the first movie was actually a lot of fun, and I definitely recommend it still. Honestly, though, when it comes to the Expendables, Expendables 2 just kicks things up a whole new level. No doubt. It was directed by Simon West, who, uh, by the way, is no stranger to the world of action films, as he's directed a couple in the past. Um, one of the most famous ones he did is uh, Con Air with uh, Nicolas Cage, John Malkovich. Now, yeah, great movie, by the way, if anybody hadn't seen it. Now, Richard Wenk, the screenwriter here for Expendables 2 and one of the story writers, this, his credit here is so weird. Because I know Richard Wenk from directing the uh, 1986 uh, vampire black comedy Vamp. For anybody that hasn't heard of that or seen that, I might do a review of that one day, maybe. Uh, but yeah, St Sylvester Stallone once again uh, retains screenwriting credit for Expendables 2. So, And also, this is the first one to give us a uh, female Expendable. Um, now, I don't see her name on the back here. But uh, for anybody that's interested, uh, she's the she was in uh, Speed Racer, the uh, Wachowskis film that I actually reviewed in my pre in my previous video. Uh, she played uh, Tejo Togokan's sister in the movie. For those of you that have seen Speed Racer, so uh, might as well talk quickly about Expendables two here on the Blu-ray. Uh, Lionsgate once again released it on Blu-ray, and unfortunately, it's just a uh, single disc. There is no other version of the film available besides 4K and DVD, so, unfortunately, yeah, this is about as, uh, this is about it, so, you know. Now, of course, there was a digital copy and ultraviolet thing here, but I got rid of it, because I, I usually don't keep, uh, I usually don't keep digital copy, uh, things, so, I'm not into that. I'm more into, a am more into physical copies than anything else. <clears throat> So, Expendables 2 on Blu-ray, uh, once again, I think it looks just as amazing as the first movie, uh, presented in 240 by one widescreen. Uh, again, it has a uh, 7.1 DTS audio track for the audio, which sounds amazing. I don't know why the, I don't know why the image keeps doing that. There we go. Optimized for 11.1 Neo X playback. I don't know what that means. Uh, not exactly sure. An audio, an audio aficionado might understand that. Somebody might understand that more than me. Uh, 2.0 Dolby Digital Audio, which is optimized for late night listening. So if you want to watch the movie either with headphones on or whatnot, that's totally up to you. I like watching them with headphones on. So Spanish 5.1 track, but these are only in Dolby Digital, not DTS uh, Master HD Audio like uh, the 7.1 track is. Um, English and Spanish subtitles. So yeah, the video, like I said, is amazing throughout the entire movie. At least I, as far as I know, it looks it looks fantastic. The audio, once again, is phenomenal. So can't really complain about both of them. So I would say out of five stars, the video once again gets a four and a half. The audio, solid five. <laughs> can't really complain. As for the bonus features, uh, not really as much as what was on the first movie, but there's still a decent amount of stuff here. Audio commentary with the director, Simon West, as he talks about the film. Gods of War, Assembling Earth's Mightiest Heroes. Big Guns, Bigger Heroes, The 80s and the Rise of the Action Film. I'm sure it's a fun featurette to have a look at. On the Assault, The Real Life Weaponry of the Expendables. Guns for Hire, The Real Expendables, uh, I'm assuming, yeah. Most of these featurettes run about somewhere between 10 to 25 minutes, so... Deleted scenes and a gag reel, so obviously there were delete obviously were deleted material for the movie. So, yeah, once again the bonus material is not as extensive as what was on the first movie, but still, I mean, still has a decent amount of extras to weave through. So, 
But yeah, The Expendables 2, by the way, was an even bigger hit than the first movie was. And it actually got better reviews by critics than the first movie. And by the way, to this date, Expendables 2 remains the highest grossing film in the franchise and is also the best reviewed movie too, believe it or not. So if there's any one film of the Expendables franchise I highly recommend, it's definitely this one. <laughs> Probably my favorite of the bunch, by far. Highly, highly recommended. All right, now time to talk about Expendables 3, the third one. Released in 2014, and, uh, well, basically this one is, uh, well, like I said, it's kind of a personal, again, a personal vendetta for Barney Ross as his uh, team is decimated by a uh, by an ex-member of the past who's now turned into a uh, arms militant dealer. And uh, ultimately, uh, he decides to uh, scrap his old team and ultimately brings in a, a bunch of new ones, a bunch of you new young blood to uh, join the roster. Um, unfortunately, Bruce Willis is not in this one. He uh, is ultimately replaced by Harrison Ford, but not the same character. The only real reason why is because uh, Bruce Willis demanded too much money. And uh, Stallone just said, nah, I'm sorry, man, we're going to have to let you go. We're going to have to cut you out. So some of the new young blood, we got uh, Kellen Lutz, who I've seen in a couple of movies. Uh, Ronda Rousey, of course, I know her for MMA fighting. Uh, Lenny Ortiz, who I found out is a uh, professional boxer. And Glenn Powell, I don't know much about him. I've seen him. He was actually in uh, Top Gun Maverick. He played uh, Hangman. I don't know if anybody knew that. I didn't I didn't even catch on to it, though. <laughs> but it does add a couple of new actors to the roster. We got Antonio Banderas and uh, Mel Gibson gets to play the uh, main villain this time as Conrad Stonebanks. Uh, Kelsey Grammers appears in the film, too. And uh, I don't see really him... I don't know if he's much of an action star because I know him for... Well, what was the show? Was it Frasier? Yeah, that was the show he was on. And the same year he did Expendables 3, he was picked up by Michael Bay for uh, Transformers Age of Extinction, where he played the main villain there. Well, I should say the main human villain, <laughs> at least. But, uh, yeah, the add-ons are pretty good. I mean, like I said, uh, I've only, yeah... I mean, it's interesting to mix uh, the old Expendables with the new one. I mean, I thought that was what the purpose was of the Expendables franchise, was to, you know, bring all these old-age action stars together. But then when the third movie comes along, they bring in a, a younger a team of younger people, which I actually get. I understand that. I, it actually works out. And again, Ronda Rousey is actually the second actress to have portrayed a uh, fem uh, second female to have played an Expendable in a movie. And she actually holds her own very well. I mean, she's definitely, uh, <laughs> she definitely can hold her own. Definitely. But it's pretty neat, though, that uh, they actually work together. Uh, well, it takes some time for them to work together. I mean, the old and the young end up clashing because, you know, they see their viewpoints or their world viewpoints are obviously different for both movies. But it works out, so... Uh, Patrick Hughes, who directed Expendables 3, I don't know much about him, uh... As far as I know, I had to look up his filmography. He only had like one movie up his sleeve when he did uh, right before Expendables 3, so I don't know much about him. Um, again, the humor is top-notch. Also, yeah, I forgot about Wesley Snipes. I forgot about him. He gets added, too. And I realized this movie does feature three actors. Three of the Expendables had actually clashed with Sylvester Stallone in the past in one of his movies. I mean, Sylvester Stallone famously fought... I. Uh, Dolph Lundgren in Rocky IV, he fought with Wesley Snipes in Demolition Man, and he fought with Antonio Banderas in Assassins from 1995. And also the fact that Mel Gibson and Jet Li at one point clashed in uh, Lethal Weapon 4. <laughs> How interesting. <laughs> so yeah, this is actually quite interesting. And also I just realized Harrison Ford and Wesley Snipes at one point both played Fugitives. Harrison Ford and The Fugitive, and uh, Wesley Snipes in the sequel to The Fugitive, U.S. Marshals. There's an interesting fact. I wonder if not many people knew that one. <laughs> uh, Expendables 3 actually was not a bad follow-up, although there were a couple of things that, unfortunately, the movie was nowhere near as successful as the two previous films. Well, there were two main reasons why it didn't get as big of a run as the previous movies. One was 
dropping the rating from R to PG-13. If you noticed in the first two movies, the first one was rated R. Yep. Sequel, also rated R. But the second, the, the third movie, PG-13. And they did that to attract a bigger audience. And, the, and unfortunately, even Sylvester Stallone himself has admitted that, uh, yeah, maybe we shouldn't have dropped the rating. But the other reason is that three weeks prior to the film's release, it was leaked and pirated on the internet. So, before the movie came out, but by the time the movie was released, the, much, of the, uh, much of the target audience had already seen the film. So, by the time the movie came out, not many people expressed interest in going to see it again. Of course, I... Uh, I didn't know about that because, well, for one thing, I don't leak or pirate stuff on the internet. I don't do that. I actually went and saw the movie legit in the theaters, paid money to go see it in the theater like I did with all the other films. And I'm definitely going to, of course, I'm definitely going to go see the fourth one soon later tonight. So, yeah. And honestly, the third movie, despite, the, despite not being as graphically bloody violent as the first two were, it still holds its own when it comes to action. It still has plenty of it. And it's also the lengthiest of the Expendables movies. Well, with the uh, extended cut, the theatrical version, I think, was 126 minutes, where the extended version is 131. So, yeah, the Blu-ray contains both theatrical and unrated cuts of the movie. This is actually the first time that in the series that, you know, both theatrical and unrated cuts are both on the same disc, which they are. So, uh, yeah, Expendables 3 didn't get as many good reviews as, say, the first two did, but that's okay, because, honestly, though, I still recommend the third movie. It's still, it's still worth a watch. It still has a lot of good action scenes. Um, it is a bit of a, it kind of has a bit of a, well, a bit of a slower pace to it than the others, but the story, though, is actually not bad, because it, it does hold its own in a way. But anyway, uh, let's talk about the movie real quick here. So, Expendables 3, here's the Blu-ray and the DVD version. Uh, by the way, when it comes to the unrated cut, it's only available on the Blu-ray. The DVD only has the theatrical version. So, uh, the movie is once again presented in a widescreen, 240 by 1 and oh my god, this movie looks amazing. <laughs> the movie was actually shot with uh, special red cameras, or I can't remember, it was something I read online, but... Man, the movie looks amazing. Like, every scene is just full of detail galore. And it looks phenomenal. I would say out of five stars, if I could give it a, if I could give it a rating higher than five, I probably would. This may be one of the best-looking movies I've seen on Blu-ray in a long time. And Expendables 3 looks phenomenal. So, yeah, the video, definitely a five. Um... The audio is presented in a Troll Dolby True HD Atmos mix. It makes, uh, makes Expendables 3 one of the... F now, I've mentioned in my Transformers Age of Extinction review that uh, that was the first movie to be released on Blu-ray in Dolby Atmos uh, with the Dolby Atmos audio track. And since Expendables 3 came out the same year, yeah, again, Dolby Atmos. And again, the Dolby Atmos track is amazing. Simply amazing. Can't really say much more. Uh, there's also a Spanish Dolby Digital audio track, but yeah, when it comes to audio tracks, that's all there is. Uh, there's also English and Spanish subtitles, so again, but the audio, once again, I have to say, solid 5 out of 5. It sound The movie looks and sounds phenomenal. In fact, I would say of the three movies, Expendables 3 might be the best looking film of the trilogy so far. Of, of the three here, I mean. <laughs> Audio, yeah, it sounds about the same as the others, but the Dolby Atmos track is meant to be louder and bigger than the others. So for uh, bonus features, there's not really a lot here. Uh, there's a documentary on the film. No commentary this time by the director, but uh, Expendables 3 documentary is like a comprehensive look at the film. It's, it's, it runs about 50 minutes, and it's a comprehensive look at the movie. New Blood, Stacked and Jacked featurette. Total Action Package featurette, so a couple of just small featurettes that talk about the movie. Gag Reel and uh, Christmas Runs the Gauntlet extended scene, so it's a scene that I don't think was even in the, uh, I don't think it was even in the unrated cut. So yeah, the bonus material package is a little weak, is a little smaller than the previous films, but I would say, 
Um, now, when it com I forgot to mention the rating for the extras on the sequel. I would say probably, I would probably give the extras here probably a three and a half for the second film. Uh, for the extras on the third movie, I'd probably say maybe two and a half. Now, if there was a commentary on here, I'd probably give it a three, but since the stuff on here is even less than the first than the first than the two than the second film i would say yeah a little less but honestly though expendables 3 is still a pretty good follow up and honestly i would highly recommend it definitely again another recommended film um yeah i don't really agree with kelsey grammer winning the razzie for worst supporting actor cuz i think he still did a better job in that movie than than what was expected so Either way, the Expendables films are highly recommended, and uh, I'll eventually, uh, well, after I watch the fourth movie, I'll definitely talk about my opinions on it, maybe in my next video. So, uh, overall, if you haven't had a chance to watch any of these movies, highly recommended you check them out. If you're an action fan, you're going to love these movies. <laughs> Some of the greatest action stars of all time are all together in one giant package, and all three films actually hold up very well. Despite the flaws with the third movie being PG-13 compared to the R that the first two got. But honestly though, this is a fun trill this is a fun series of movies to check out. Basically the kind of movies you just want to turn your brain off, heat up the popcorn, and just watch these guys do what they do best. So uh Yeah. Definitely recommend these movies. So, this concludes the presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will continue to do more videos like this in the days to come. So until then, everybody take care and be safe and uh, just, yep, yeah, be well. Until then, adieu.